Welcome to today's live stream. Today we're going to be doing lab two for CISA Plus. We're going to be analyzing packet captures using Wireshark. I don't think we're going to be doing any live captures, but we're going to be opening old captures. I'm going to teach you a little bit about the Wireshark platform, how to use it, and how you can use it to do some research uh, after the fact. So you could even use this for forensics if you really need to, but let's go ahead and jump in. All right, so we got our Wireshark uh, platform in this lab here we have PC1 just has it's called PC1 PCAP. It's just a Windows machine, uh, Windows 10 device, and it has Wireshark on it. So we're not actively uh, analyzing any packet captures. I don't think. I think we're just going to use this one machine. Okay, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments or email info at cybercrafttraining.com if you're watching this after the fact. Okay, so. Let's go ahead and, and start here. This just says that we can use either TC, TCP dump or Wireshark to do packet analysis. Uh, TCP dump is you know more of it's a terminal um, program. It comes with Kali Linux. You can it's not as a graphical program like Wireshark. So Wireshark can be a little easier to use. This is Wireshark right here on this device. You just double click Wireshark to open it up. And I like Wireshark, I think it's great. It's very easy to use, it's very intuitive, and you're not gonna go wrong just playing around. You'll find a lot of settings, so it's pretty good. I've already logged on. It's asked us to open up a existing capture. So we're gonna go to File, Open. We're gonna navigate to the C drive, Lab Files, and PCAPs. Okay, so we're gonna go to C, Lab Files, and then PCAPs. Then we're going to open cap one. Okay, so now we've opened up our pcap one or our cap one file. pcap just stands for packet capture. So as we go through here, here's the different packets that we've captured. Now, some things to note with Wireshark first, you can sort by any of these columns. This is basically like a spreadsheet display, so I can sort by the destination, the protocol, info the source, all of that. I can scroll here, okay? I can also click on these graphical representations. Each protocol is gonna have a color associated with it, essentially, or each type of packet capture. So we can see that here, and that can be helpful if you have lots of data. Looks like this one has quite a few packet captures, a lot of data to go through. In the middle, it's gonna have some uh, good information and that's exactly what this is saying here uh, this is an interpretation of the packet let me expand this out so we can look at this has things like you know when the packet was sent uh, time you know, a lot of the information is listed up here in the packet is going to be listed here in more detail it's going to have the length uh, the size of the packet what type of packet it is, this is an IPv4 packet. We can see that right here, IPv4. This is a TCP packet. It has the source, destination ports, source ports, destination ports. So all of this is very useful information. And this is a, a synchronized packet, a SYN packet, S-Y-N, okay? I believe we have this one, now we have the top one selected. So that's all very useful and then if you want to get into the nitty gritty, you can go down to the bottom. This is the hexadecimal uh, representation of the packet. Okay, this is the the hexadecimal readout of the the bytes of the packet. We have 16 bytes for each line here, listed in hexadecimal. And from this, you can determine if you know your t your IP headers, your internet protocol headers. You can determine a lot of information just by looking at the hex code. So that can be very useful. You don't necessarily need to know that, but if you do, you know, as you progress in your security career, you'll probably know those shortcuts and understand that information. You don't need to know that for Sysa Plus, though. Okay, great. All right, so what is the source and destination IP address for the first packet? Now we can sort here by numbers. You know, each packet here is given a number. So how many packets do we have in total? Uh, looks like we have 2,091 packets. So it's asking us to select the first packet. Okay. And what is the source and destination IP address for the packet? Okay, so we can see that right here. 
and we can just type that in 10.39.5.6 we do a comma and 10.39.5.2 okay and yep that's correct now this one isn't scored because there's just so many ways we can input that though they could have listed this out as two different uh, questions and had it scored by a script okay and then it's asking us to expand transmission control protocol to this bottom pane note the source and destination port numbers yep we have that you can also see that information here in info you know port 54,180 to 443 so it's going through HTTPS 443 is used for HTTPS and that makes sense. This is a TCP packet. It's a SYN. It's a SYN packet. All right. Destination port 54180. And then we also have what are the flags set for this packet? We have flags right here. So SYN would be and then uh, S. Let's see. All right, great. So it's a SYN packet, we mentioned that. Everything looks good. Double check this. Uh, oh, destination port. Destination port's 443, right. That was a source port. Source to destination. So source port, destination port. Okay, great. All right, so pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory. Let's go ahead and go to the next section here. So we can scroll, as it says, we can scroll through each frame in the capture, or we can use some different tools that are built into Wireshark to help our analysis. So we can sort through using the analysis tool. So we can go to analyze and we can select expert information. Then we're going to get uh, a pop-up menu here. Okay. And this is going to give us some expert information. <laughs> it's going to give us some more detailed information presented in a different manner. Okay, so we can see these different types of drop downs here, different severities. And as we click on the expert information, we can find where these packets are. Okay, so we can click on you know, some of these have different warnings associated with them. We can click on them. It's going to automatically scroll in our Wireshark window to that packet. So if I click on packet 65, it'll take us right to packet 65. Okay, and it'll be highlighted. You can always tell it's highlighted with this like lightish gray color. Okay. All right, so now the, this expert information is used usually to determine anomalies in your, your packets. So if there's a certain type of attack, maybe like a denial of service attack or suspicious ping, that can be analyzed and discovered using the expert information tool. Okay. Now, one thing that pops out here, we have warnings. Okay. The warning we're getting is for connection reset. And if we expand that out, we see that there are quite a number of, pa of connection resets. Uh, maybe about half of these packets are packet resets or, or resets. Maybe, I don't know, a third. It's kind of hard to tell because they're spaced out. Uh, we could, I wonder if we can get a count here. Yeah, we could sort this also by our category. Maybe we can find it here if we sort by info. There we get all these resort resets. Now you see these resets are listed in red. So from here we can get a good a fair idea of how many of these are actually resets. It looks bay about a third. So we're about a third of the way down the scroll. So that's kind of interesting. We also have a lot of connection requests uh, for or chats for a wide range of ports. And we do see that too. So we have the warning for the connection resets and then we also have a lot of uh, sessions being connected. And that would be by TCP, SYN, SYNAC packets, and ACK packets. So those are like SYNACs are being used to determine the number of chats and uh, SYN packets over 443 are used for the other 
chat. So that's how we're determining how many chats we have. Okay, anything else that's telling us here? All right, so we, it's just asking us to close this. We'll go ahead and close that. Now we can also look at statistics. You know, we were trying to determine those counts on our own. Let's go ahead and look at statistics. We can go to protocol hierarchy. Now we have some uh, more information here on the statistics. It tells us the number of packets. So, you know, I told you how many packets there were because we sorted by the number. We could just go to statistics and find that information very easily. Okay. We could see the number of packets that are IPv4, in this case, all of them, 100%, okay, the percentage of the packets. And we could see how many are TCP versus other protocols. We have ICMP here. ICMP makes up 0.1% while the rest are TCP packets. You can see the number of bytes, bits, end packets, and all of that associated with these different uh, types. So that, that can be very helpful, okay? We don't see any higher pack. We don't see any other packets other than TCP and ICMP. All right. So now one thing to note, as it says in the lab, you know, we've opened this packet capture. This isn't a live capture. So we've opened this. Now this tells us one of two things. First off, by opening this packet capture, this tells us that either the nature of the traffic was just TCP and IC, uh, ICMP packets or there was a filter applied on the packet capture when it was running. You'd apply filters to only capture certain types of packets. So the filter could have been only for TCP and ICMP packets, which is why we're only seeing that. We don't know that from opening the file. Okay, let's go to statistics. Now again, there's lots of different options here. And as you go through the lab, I invite you to do these on your own. You know, let's explore this. You're not going to break the lab. Uh, try these different options. These are the major ones that the lab wants you to uh, pay attention to. So we go to statistics, conversations. Okay. And we can, we have our different conversations here. And some stats associated with them. And you can go through each of these tabs. Of course, we have TCP. Most of these are TCP packets. We don't have any UDP packets. We don't have any IPv6 packets. Most, all of these are, except for that 0.1%, which is one packet, are TCP uh, IPv4 packets. Okay. And you can also sort that through here. So if we unselected TCP, we can unselect that from the top. But as we open this, you know, I remove TCP, I put it back in, and as we go to the TCP tab, you can see all the different conversations that are happening. These are called conversations. These are different uh, connections that are being established within this packet capture. So we can see all of these right here. This is just another way to view the information that we see here. Okay. Now, we're going to have different types of source addresses and destination addresses, source ports, destination ports, uh, port A, port B. And we can look and just get a sense for the different types of ports that are being connected to and from. Now, most of these, if we can see this, most of these uh, connections are going to be very short duration. If we look at the duration tab here, and we sort by duration, you can see that the longest duration was just about three seconds, and most of these are under a second, okay, these connections. So that's kind of intriguing, okay, that's not entirely, you wouldn't call that normal behavior here, okay. Now we also have various different destination ports, and we have just a few source ports, it looks like, all 54,000. 400 something, but look at our destination ports. They, they vary wildly, okay? Lots of different destination ports. Okay, now we can go ahead and uh, close this out. Go back to our uh, port number one, or not port number one, packet number one. We scroll back to the top, packet number one. We could right click this and find some more information. 
right click and we could follow TCP stream. Okay, so we go to follow and then TCP stream. Now we do see data in this session. We see this, this session was established. Okay, we have a sin and a synac and then a reset. So that was all part of the same, same uh, TCP connection. We basically just, what we've done there is we've applied a filter, okay? So we've applied a filter to only see this packet number one, okay? And you can see that filter that's applied at the top. All of these filters are applied at the top. So if we were to delete that, okay, and hit and commit that. This, whenever you make a change at the top bar, you have to commit it. If we were to do that, you can see we get back all of the packets. But we could do this by right clicking follow TCP stream. Okay. You see how this packet's automatically applied for us. And you can know that because of the green background. Okay. So we look wants us to take a look at the flags of these three packets. So what did the attacker do? Let's take a look. So again, we know how to do the flags, we've already done that. We have a sin, okay, a sin packet, and we have a sin ac, a sin ac, and then a reset packet was sent, okay. So first the packet was sent from 54,180, the source address, then a sin ac was sent back, and then another packet was sent 54,180, okay. So, you know, you probably already know the answer by now. You know, we see a lot of different packets. Um, so we can say there's a sin packet, sin, ack, and then a reset. The idea here is that the attacker is performing some sort of uh, attack on availability, okay? So the attacker started the session but then reset it after getting the server to respond. So the attackers sending lots of responses, lots of uh, SYN packets to the server, causing the server to reply with a SYN ACK, and then the, the attacker is immediately ending the session or resetting the session. Okay, so this is some sort of attack on availability, some sort of denial of service attack. All right, so we can click the red cross button at the filter bar. Of course, you can just click this. It's not red. It, it really should say gray because it's not red until you hover over it. Uh, but we can clear it that way. You, know, you can also just highlight everything in here and hit backspace. That'll clear it too. Select packet 42. Okay, we can scroll down till we get 42. Okay. Looking at the summary of packets of 42 and 43, what did the attacker do? So in 42, we see... The attacker sent a sin packet. Okay, sent a sin packet. Establish a connection, and then in packet 43, let's take a look. The response was a reset acknowledge from the uh, target. Okay, so the server sent an SYN packet and then the uh, attacking machine, which was 10.39.5.6, sent a reset acknowledge. Let's see if that's what it's asking. Try Attacker tried to connect using the Telnet port. Oh yeah. We need to take a look at the ports here. Attacker tied, oh yeah, source port 23. So that's not traditionally a port you're gonna be using for a TCP request. So that's why we got these different flags. Yep, so the attacker used port 23 for the connection request. The request was refused by the server. So the server resent a reply, a reset, um, and that's why we see that order. So 42, we have the attacking machine 
sending a TCP request over port 23 and the server automatically denying that. So that's basically, that's again a method of eating up the resources on that server. What was the attacker trying to discover in this attack? Now, was this denial of service or was this more reconnaissance? It depends on if this was part of a larger subset of packets. So, uh, I'm going to say if the server was properly hardened. Because if the server was hardened correctly, it would... Uh, respond you know with reset requests to a telnet prompt if you were to try to establish a tcp connection over telnet it shouldn't work but this the attacker was trying to probe that to see yeah which port numbers were open and which were not uh, basically a port scan okay in this instance yeah that's correct so and the reason we're seeing a port scan is because of all the different um, different ports, the destination ports that we see here. Now, if this was, there's not enough packets here to eat up the system resources, but if there were more, you know, if this was bad traffic and this was sent at scale, then that could definitely be a denial of service. But as we see here, this is, This is looking like a port scan. So this is probably in the reconnaissance phase. The attacker's trying to see what ports are available, are open on the system, and that's why we see a lot of these reset requests, or these reset uh, packets. Okay, so that's pretty interesting. So the attacker can use this information The target could, the attacker could create some sort of uh, exploit or use a specific port that knows is open to then try and do some sort of exploit on the server. Okay, so that was pretty useful. I think it's a pretty good representation of a, a pretty common type of packet capture that you would have. Now, in order to analyze this, of course, you'd have to capture these packets as they're happening live, and you might have Wireshark running at set times or maybe even you know, periodically to capture and then later analyze the, the packets that you're capturing. It doesn't do you any good as an organization to capture packets and have nobody look at them. So you do want to have somebody looking at these, looking at these just like logs, probably on a weekly basis, just to see if there's anything that stands out. Okay, so on the second one, we're just going to analyze this on our own. So let's go ahead and analyze this on our own. We're going to open up cap two. So on this one, we're, we have a little more independent thought. It's not giving us any help. So let's take a look. Okay, so if we were to open up a packet capture for the first time like we're doing here, and I haven't looked at this ahead of time, so we're going to be doing this together. First off, I just want to get some general information. Uh, I want to take a look at what the general nature nation nature of the packets are. So I'm just going to do a quick scroll down and start taking a look at these packets, seeing what types of packets we have. I'm noticing a lot of HTTP, a lot of TCP. The source and the destination is pretty consistent. We have 192.168.2.192 and 10.1.0.10. It seems pretty consistent here. These are a lot of HTTP requests. And we're getting a certain type of file. We're getting a lot of GET requests, okay? So, I know this could be some sort of application attack. Just my general thoughts. I'm just thinking out loud as I look through this. Could be an application attack. PHP uh, is a coding language used for websites. Trying to get a lot of different files from the website. 
seems like some sort of website exploit. I don't know if that's going to be like a cross-site scripting attack or some sort of denial of service attack yet. I'm not sure. A lot of these are unencrypted. 1087. Hmm. Okay. So we got to, from that initial scroll down, we understand a lot of these are TCP, HTTP packets. We know the source of the destination port. And these two machines are communicating back and forth from one another. So that's pretty helpful to understand. Uh, let's take a look at the website. Let's figure out what this is. DVWA HTTP. DVWA, DVWA CSS. CSS is a coding language, or website language. Login. Okay, so this is interesting. Uh, this might be. It's definitely some sort of attack on the website. This is just get requests here. The time seems to be increasing for these. Hmm. So it seems like we have quite a few sessions being established. I think these most of these are just getting files from the website get assets uh, okay word li wordpress license wordpress is some sort of wordpress website okay so we see that from wp license wp includes themes okay content it says get requests now we have okay let's take a look at this debt request we have a get request we have a get request for a certain type of asset, and then we have HTTP 404 not found. So we have a lot of 404 not found responses, okay? So if we see wcontent slash themes 2011 slash images, what that tells us, that's a 2011 is a theme. You know, WordPress is their default themes. They have 2020, 2011, 2019. They categorize it, categorize it by year. Now this is the file system used by WordPress. So we know that the attacker is trying to get a WordPress, uh, a, a file from that WordPress website. Now remember a website is just a collection of files established and then presented to the user when they log onto the site or whenever they, um, they navigate to the site using a browser. So it looks like the attacker is trying to gather as much information as they possibly can using commonly used um, file names, okay? This is almost like a, looks like a, a bot's trying to do this type of attack. Like some sort of script is being designed to go out to this website, try and download whatever it can uh, to compromise the website in some way. A lot of these are being denied or being shown as not found, as in that file is not found on the website. Now this might not be specifically for WordPress. The attacker could just be trying to target any type of, uh, any type of website, not just WordPress. So the attacker might not know what the architecture is behind the website. It could just be trying, they could just be trying to get whatever information they can. All right, now let's take a look at some of these, this information, a little more detail. So there's a get request here. 
Source port from 42,292. Let's see if most of these are from that. Yeah, they are. Okay. Okay, so first off, let's do the adversary and victim IP address. The adversary IP address can be 192.168.1.1. .2.192 and then the the victim is going to be 10.1.0.10 let me make this a little more consistent here okay so that's the adversary IP address and the victim and let's take a look. Now we know I sorted this in reverse order. So as we see, we have a lot of different get requests. A lot of these are being denied or being shown as uh, not found on that website. Okay, so first off, we're starting with TCP requests. As we go through here, we're seeing HTTP requests and some TCP requests. Let's see at the back on the attack if we see any more TCP requests and we do periodically what are these TCP requests at the end of the file how's it going okay so let's see Okay, so these are just ACK packets sent periodically. Just to keep the session up, essentially. So we have another session established here, SYNAC, or SYN, SYNAC uh, from the victim, and then ACK from the attacker, and then ACK, ACK, ACK again, yeah, so these are just getting the, all of these are get requests, essentially. Yeah, I need some more time here, okay. If we go down here, you can see more detail, like we see a little bit of detail here in the info. Uh, file manager, connector. So these are different normal nomenclature used for those uh, websites, normal file structures. So I'm thinking that the attacker's trying to guess what sort of website, what sort of um, website structure, whether that's, you know, WordPress or some other website builder, and then try and get these different uh, files from it. So let's see how that works. They've been trying all these different types of editors. We saw WordPress content, all that. Let's see at the end if they give any success. Okay. So at the end, we have a lot of TCP requests. Oh, I think I see what's going on. Okay, so here we have a post request. Okay, that means that the attacker is actually writing something. Get, get, OAuth, not found, not found, not found. Fin ack, fin ack. Okay, so it looks like the attacker's writing to a blog. Writing, you know, index.php page equals view someone's blog. So if someone's you can make that anybody. So this is a blog page. They're writing something to the blog page. This could be like some sort of cross-site scripting attack. And then let's see. HTTP one. Okay. Okay. So basically they've, they've modified the blog. They've added some sort of text. Okay. 
I think this is probably a cross-site scripting attack. Attacker first gathered information on the structure of their website. Once they established the website structure, they modified a blog article and wrote some sort of malicious code on the blog. Now it could be probably cross-site scripting. Let's see if we're right here. Okay, both 192.168.1.101 and 192.168.2.1 establish ordinary HTTP browsing sessions. You know, we saw that. Okay. Uh, mostly. Okay. Yeah, so we're fine there. Um, if you look at the summary of conversations, through Wireshark though, oh yeah, we haven't used any of our tools. All right, let's close this out. Let, let's use some of the tools that we have at our disposal. So let's go ahead and do analyze. I didn't read the rest of that, but let's go ahead and do expert information here. Okay, so this is some helpful information. I probably should have looked through this. Almost feels like cheating, but all right, let's see what they say. Many single packet requests from 192 and 168.192 occur very quickly and generate not found responses. This is typical of automated scanning. Yeah. So we, we figured that out. Uh, you know, the attacker was doing some sort of uh, information gathering. Okay, so the website application scanner was Nitco used for this one. Okay. So we yeah, you could use expert information. And we see that we have a lot of get requests here. Okay. We basically did the analysis the old fashioned way, just by looking through the panes. Uh, so yeah, this was a, basically a type of scan to determine the nature of the website. That's why we saw all those not found requests. And that's why we got all these different errors. If it was a normal, you know it's a non a normal browsing session because you didn't have successful, you weren't retrieving files, you weren't looking at web pages. I do think this is significant though at the bottom that they did write to some sort of blog. So I wonder if that comes up later. It doesn't, but as we can see here, I think there's some extra information here. We have this TCP, like here's an update. Look at this, that's a TCP request. But this HTTP request here, we're posting to this blog. And that's coming from the, the source, the attacker IT. So this could have been, you, know, you would use first a scanner, and then you would use that scanner to determine the nature of the website, and then exploit that somehow. So that's very interesting. Okay, so all they want us to do was determine the first part, which we did. Attacker first gathered information on the structure of the website, uh, and they were using NITCO, which is a website scanner. Okay. Let's go ahead and do the third packet capture. Cap three. Again, if you guys have any questions, you know, put a comment in or email info cybercrafttraining.com. Happy to answer. All right. So again, we're working independently here. These are pretty good packet captures. You can also find packet captures online if you want to practice. There's lots of free resources out there that give you packet captures to go through. There's some on the Wireshark website. So if you're interested in trying to get better at doing this. I definitely recommend checking those out. Um, all right, so let's take a look here. First, again, I'm gonna just take a look. We're gonna use some of the more advanced tools this time. I won't hamstring myself. First, I'm just gonna do a scroll. I'm gonna generally look at this. We see lots of different types of packets. We have DNS, ARP, TCP, SMTP already. We have a browser, lots of SMTP. being an email, pack, email uh, protocol. Lots of source to destination, source being 10102, destination 192.168.11, and back and forth from those two. Okay, we see data fragments. Okay, that's not, it's not normal. 
So that can be indicative of something. Let's keep going. Lots of data fragments. Lots of TCP requests, lots of ACK requests, and then data fragments being sent. Okay. So we have a series of ACK requests and then we have data fragments. And we have this pattern over and over again. Data fragments, so this could be maybe a fragmentation attack. Yep, and I think this just continues, huh? Well, let's see if this changes. Nope. Okay, this just continues. Same source and destination. Well, wow, there's the thinnest, the thinnest green line here that you can see. You barely pick that up, it's like a pixel wide. Oh, uh, here we go. Here's some more information. Let's see. Okay, now we have an ARP broadcast. Who has 10.1.0.1? 10.1.0.1 is at this MAC address. Okay, so we have an ARP broadcast. And then we have probably some ARP, some MAC address spoofing. Okay, so it's asking who has uh, IP address 10.1.0.1. Tell this IP, this IP address. So we're, that information is being sent to 10.1.0.2. It's saying that 10.1.0.1 has this IP, this MAC address. So we, we got to look at that MAC address. And then I bet now we have the source at 10.1.0.2 to 10.1.0.1 with a SYN, a SYN ACK, and then an ACK. So immediately afterwards, a TCP connection was established to 10.1.0.1. All right. And then we have some more activity between 10.1.0.1 and 10.1.0.2. SMB packets, okay. All right. SMB is very often used um, for exploits. Pull up some. Yeah. Okay. SMB stands for server message block. And there's a couple different versions. This is version two. So here, we're having communication between 0 0.1 and 102. To establish a connection request, one of the two. Session setup. Tree connect requests. Okay. Now these are our packets here. Okay. So we've established a session, essentially. A session was established. Uh, between one zero two and one and uh, one ten not one to zero not one. Yeah. All right. So it looks like there is some there's some shenanigans going on here. <laughs> okay. What are these? Okay, so let's start, look at this start here. Most of this is coming from 101, right? Everything's pretty consistent with that. Hmm. This is an interesting one. Let's keep going through the rest before I draw any conclusions. Okay, then we have another 
We have a lot of packets asking for different IP or different MAC addresses. Who has 10.1.0.254? All this is going back to first off 101 and then 102. Basically, you're using the ARP request to determine the different MAC addresses of these uh, endpoints. NT workstations. Oh, no. Okay. So it looks like we have a lot of spoofing going on, from what I can tell. And we have push and ack. Okay. P push uh, PSS or PSH. It's a push flag. You can see that down with our flag push push ack. So now we're getting push acks and another string. These are like oases of useful information. Again, ARP requests. Okay, we have land manager protocols from 101 and 102. So it appears that 101 and 102 were spoofed at one point. Started out. from 10.1.0.1. Well, actually, is it? Okay, so you see a lot of these are classrooms, okay? Mail.classroom, classroom.local. These are basically an online learning management platform, I'd say. Uh, and that's probably what's being exploited here because we see this trend throughout these packets as we get to these bits of information, we see more indication of that. We saw a broadcast to the domain. It looks like you have a, a series of connections being established to these this learning management system. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. They don't give you enough time in these labs. They really don't. Well, it doesn't help that I start. I set up the lab before we even start the stream, just make sure it's working correctly. So I'm about half an hour into the lab <laughs> before we start. Uh, let's see. Yeah. All right, let's go down to the end here. Now, for this one, we definitely want to use, we have over 15,000 packets. We definitely want to use some of our, our tools. So let's see at the, at the tail end what's going on here. Okay. Lots of acts and pushes, solicit XID, local ID. <laughs> Again, we're telling 10.1.0.102, we're telling them different uh, MAC addresses. And then you're basically, immediately after that, you get a ping from 102 to that target. You notice that that trend has maintained itself throughout all of these different uh, spikes of activity here. Two is two, you know, again, we have the same pattern. And then we have all of this. All right, so let's use some of our tools. So first I'm gonna do expert information, okay? Duplicate IP address configure, that's a warning. Uh, 10.1.0.242 is at this MAC address, this MAC address, this MAC address, and this MAC address. Okay, so basically we're seeing some spoofing going on here. Okay. Connection resets. 
Okay, we have quite a few resets at various at the very end, mostly at the end. Previous segments not captured. Common at capture start. That's fine. That's nothing to pay attention to. Act segment that wasn't captured. Common at the start. Okay. Connection. Fit. Let's see. Note new TCP connection is started with the same ports as an earlier session. Okay. And that's at the very end. So this could be, it could be significant. Could be um, establishing, you know, a connection using a previously uh, established session. So we could be capturing a cookie here. We have some fin and finac packets. All right, TCP window updates. Synax and sins. Okay. All right, let's take a look at our statistics. Um, we didn't go through a lot of these. Let's go ahead. What are the one what is the one that we went through as an example? Protocol hierarchy? Yeah, we can do that one. Okay. Let's go ahead and do protocol hierarchy. This gives us some information. What we did earlier, most of these are IPv4 packets. We know that a lot of them are TCP. Some of them are SMTPs with some ARP. So I think what's going on here is that we, we have an attacker that's performing some reconnaissance on different... Uh, on this environment, this this classroom environment, okay, this classroom dot local, determining, you know, through our packets, what uh, resources are available in that environment, what endpoints are there, and then performing spoofing, using the information gathered from the art packets, to spoof those various endpoints. So, the destination. We initially start here from 10.1.0.1, .1 don't we? Local master announcement, metasploitable workstation server. The 10.1.0.10, 10.1.0.255. And then this source stays consistent, doesn't it? No, or it changes. Okay, this this changes every time this gets spoofed. 10.1.0.101. Hmm. Anybody have any ideas or any thoughts to add? This is where the activity is most, you know, at these little spikes of activity. This is where we see some spoofing going on, I believe and then progressing from there. All right, let's go ahead and, and see what what's they say here. All right, looking through Wireshark, the email and the SMTP traffic comprising stream zero reveals a progress of a phishing attack. Okay, I think we missed the phishing attack. With msupdate.exe sent as an attachment. Okay, let's take a look at the SMTP traffic before we go any further. 
Let's see if we can see this. Right. Okay, and as we go through here, we see this mail.classroom.local smtp mail from okay mail from administrator at classroom.local recipient bobby at classroom.local okay got it so then we're sending the email with the attachment that's what's going on here that's why we have all these data fragments. Okay, so this is the attachment, basically. That's why we have multiple data fragments. This is all the attachment. So let's see what Bobby does, if Bobby replies. So we need to sort through. Now what we can do here is we can filter out uh, SMTP if we want. Okay, so that was being sent to 10.1.0.2. So 10.1.0.2 is receiving all of the, receiving the attachments. Let's go back up to the top. Mail from administrator at classroom.local. So that's being sent from 192.168, dot 192.168.1.1 to 10.1. 1.0.2 that's being Bobby Bobby is uh, Bobby at classroom dot local and Bobby you know the mail server is replying okay essentially then these data fragments are sent which is the attachment itself okay so that's useful we didn't quite pick up on that okay so let's keep going. So from that, we have some sort of phishing attack. So then we have Bobby opens up this attachment. Okay. And then we have Oh yeah, absolutely. Happy to help with those PBQs. Anytime. I know those are tricky. They're notorious with CompTIA. Looks like we have a, a connection then established from 192.168.1.1. Okay. And then I believe we have some session hijacking and the attacker then uses Bobby's uh, IP. Let's take a look. Okay, MS update is sent as an attachment. Note SMTP servers 1.2, 1.68.1.1 and 102 are not the attacker victim systems. So that's not the attacker victim systems. Uh, frame 54.59 sees the listener installed. So that's on stream one. The session is transferred, transfers another executable file. Note the MZ file signature at the top of the stream. Later in the stream, a cryptographic library is invoked. Note where port 8080 is often used for HTTP proxy traffic. This is raw TCP data. In streams 2 and 3, the compromise 10.1.0.101 host connects to the ICP shares on Win 2016 DC. Okay, so honestly, we're a little off on this one. The final stream shows more raw TCP activity between 10.1.0.101 and 192.168.2.101. The host has been able to compromise 10.1.0.101. Okay, 
with malware and has been uploading additional tools and tested connections to other hosts in the network. So we did see that. And we saw that uh, we're getting files transferred from 10.1.0.101 to the other hosts on the network. Okay, and that's what you know. this is. These are files being transferred. So right after here, after this spike, this is where 101 is then being spoofed. 10.1.0.101. Yeah, okay. And this is being, connections are being established using port 8080, which is what it's saying out here. So we have a listener installed from port 10.1.0.101 to uh, 192.168.2.101. Now, we can look at this, let's see. Let's go here. A better way to look at this data would be to right click here and go to follow TCP stream. This is really what we should have been using to analyze this. So here we see 220 mail.classroom.local.esmp, uh, mail from the administrator to bobby at classroom.local received from friendly admin using okay sent from using thunderbird we got an email message in mime format hi bobby we finally got that update patch in for the office zero day can you roll out the attached to computers in your group as soon as admin guy okay so this is a phishing attack targeting bobby bobby's Normally the butt of a lot of jokes in these labs. Okay, so now that we've done the TCP stream, okay, we can see that. And then we have all of this is the attachment essentially. Okay, so that's the first stream. Now we can go to the next stream here, okay, without going back to look at these different captures. So, honestly, this is a good... This is a good set of packets to learn how to use these uh, these follow commands. I was trying to do it just by looking through the packets themselves. Missed a lot of information. If we do it this way, it kind of lists everything out for you very easily. Okay. And right at the top, this program cannot be run in DOS mode. Okay, so we see that here. And that's what this image was trying to show us. This is from this data stream. Again, to get this, all I'm doing is I'm right clicking and I'm following data stream. So let's go back to the top. Once you see something suspicious in your packet capture, oh, I have a filter on here. Once you see something suspicious in your packet capture, you can follow that data stream. Okay. Uh, mail from administrator, right click, follow, TCP stream, and then that filter is automatically applied. Now we can look at the different filters uh, here by just clicking this up and down arrow. Okay, program cannot be run in DOS mode. Let's scroll down, we have some information here. Just kind of not scroll past it. where was that there we go okay okay so this is establishing a listener okay and that's what that's saying here now the listener is going to uh, transfer another executable file. 
look up at the top, MZ denotes that file signature, okay? Let's see if we have any more streams here. Yep, and then that's why we saw, saw these SMB connections and Landman connections. If we look, SMB, and we, ha we saw some Landman. Uh, those are establishing sessions using that listener. That's why we saw that. Okay, and then in streams two and three, the compromised 1.1, host connects to the IPC IPC uh, shares on Win 2016 DC and Win 07 WS machines, and we see that uh, the compromised. Oh, we're on stream three, I think. Let's see. No, we're on stream two. Yeah, 10.1.0.1. Establishes connections here. Session request, positive session, positive session response. Uh, negotiate the protocol. Session setup. Okay, so this was establishing a session between uh, 101 and then 102. Okay, so we see that. Let's go to another stream here. Uh, we see then stream two. We should. In stream two, this is being established from 102. No, from one, from one, I see, okay. All right, and then let's see, the final stream shows more, let's take a look at the last stream. I think we only have four, do we? No, we have five. We have a lot of streams. It says here that the final stream shows more TCP activity between 101 and 1968.101, which is stream seven. And let's see. Here we see that TCP port numbers were used. Remember when we saw that in expert information? Same ports as earlier. No. It was here somewhere. Anyway, let's go back to our streams. All right, so the final stream shows more TCP data, more C TCP connections between these two, source and destination. Yeah. So the host 192.168.2.101 was able to compromise 10.1.0.101 with malware and has been uploading additional tools, testing connections to other hosts on the network. Okay. So yeah, we we got a little bit of that. We didn't get, we should have used that stream tool to follow the, um, the data streams. Very helpful. And this is a reason why you use it. Very easy when you have large number of packets like this to miss certain information if you don't use that. So this is a really good example of when to use that follow command. And when you're analyzing thousands and thousands of packets, remember we have 15,000 packets here. Okay, so it's really hard to do by hand. In the second in the second scenario, we were able to look through that by ourselves. On this third one, we wanted to use that tool. Okay, so that was pretty good. Let's go ahead and end the lab. There's no grades on this one, uh, just because all of it is open essay questions. But I hope this was helpful. I hope you were able to learn something about Wireshark. And, you know, again, if you have any questions, info at cybercrafttraining.com or just uh, put a comment. And, you know, if you're looking for SISA Plus training, if you want to work with these labs directly, check the links in the description. We have SISA Plus training classes going on every month. Uh, we have a boot camp coming up in a couple weeks. We'll teach you everything you need to know, and we guarantee that you're going to pass your SISA Plus in the first time when you go through our boot camps. 
uh, pay for your exam voucher and a second voucher if you don't pass that first time. So we also have self-paced training. And if you have any questions about SISA Plus, feel free, email me, info at or leave a comment. I'll be happy to answer your questions, and I'm here to help. I want to see you guys pass. So thanks so much for joining in today. Hope you have a wonderful day. Take care.